Hello, welcome everyone to the Land Down Under Hangout. This month we read my pick for the month, which is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa. Um, just a brief summary, uh, it's about a boy named Rintaro whose grandfather, he lives with his grandfather, his grandfather passes away and leaves obviously his uh, bookshop to him and then suddenly this little tabby shows up and asks him to help save some books. So it's a very light read, only just a little over 200 pages. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll go through our thoughts. I might start today just as a change. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I'd say this is, I didn't actually look it up, but I say it is a young adult um, aimed book. Uh, the main character of course is a teenager. Um, uh, I thought it flowed well. It had a nice flow. It wasn't very complicated, the storyline. Um, I enjoyed it. It had some like nice little messages in there about, you know, life and growing up and being a person and all that sort of thing. So I quite enjoyed it. It wasn't it t particularly complicated, but it was just a nice enjoyable read for me. So who would like to go next? Uh, let's say Mel. <laughs> Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I spent a lot of time, like almost at the start of each of the, what did they call them? The, um, labyrinths. labyrinths. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would start each one almost every time going, oh, this doesn't sound good. I'm not sure I'm going to like this one and always ended up enjoying it by the end of it. <laughs> um, and so, uh, uh, right even down to the very last one, like it was very much a, 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 a thing for me going through it. And yet every time I was happy. So, I had a good time. Good read. Very nice and easy to read and yet still had a, a, a lot to say, I thought. So that was interesting. All right. Elizabeth? Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was quite an interesting book to think about. So I'm looking forward to unpacking it. <laughs> uh, Bobby? Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't like throw up my hands and love it and fireworks and everything. I think I would have given it like a 3.5. Like it was... I, I expected I was surprised like if like by the end of it I was like okay I liked that I liked what they did with it yeah okay cool I see what they what she what the author was going for I'm like I also feel a bit lukewarm and I know it's interesting that I was like you know it's got a cat in it why would I feel lukewarm about a cat book like because me cats right but um I mean I'm still glad I read it and everything like that and I'm happy and I'm looking forward to unpacking it but yeah I guess so far I'm like yeah it was lukewarm for me which was just interesting Sarah? Yeah, it was lukewarm for me too, if not more. And I was more of a 2.5 um, out of 5. And it felt even more children's than YA for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of it. Like maybe if I had that set up, I would have felt a bit differently about it. I, I don't know. Um, I will be interested in talking to who else did the audio book because I do think that's part of my problem with this. Mm. Um, and I can talk more into, I think, I'd be interested to talk to those who did read um, text. And um, I'd be interested if Mel, if you actually read it in the original Japanese, because I wonder if also my problem was in the translation. So yeah, it was a, it was a, it wasn't terrible. Like there was it, good ideas, themes were strong, just, I just didn't, it just missed the mark for me. So, you know, it wasn't a, it, it wasn't the, the book that we all mock um, on the island with the circus crap, <laughs> that one. <laughs> it wasn't that, but it wasn't like, I'm, I, I would not recommend this to people. I'd really struggle to know who to recommend it to. Certainly. Yeah, I guess for me, it's like, I, I'm not going to go around and say, I just read this book and it was so great. You should read it too. But I'm not going to deter people from reading it either if they're, mm -hmm. if they're already. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, go for it. It's, you know. um, I'm curious, Sarah, have you read A Wrinkle in Time? I wanted to. It was always on my list and I have not. And then when, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure now that I would be able to read it, if that makes sense. Yeah. As you might recall, it's also like, um, what was, uh, 
for those who in this is maybe two years ago we did some New Zealand reads as part of my choice we did two um, shorter novels and one of them Mel suggested The Changeling which was very good and the other one was um, the one called The Half Man of O which I remember being read to as a child and I thought it was awful as an adult like I remember having nostalgia about that as a child and now I was like that was badly written <laughs> so again I don't know if that would be something as a child I would love more if that makes sense um, I just found it like a useful book as a comparison for this because mm -hmm. um, I feel like the kind of like targeted at maybe the same age range and they've got some of that sort of philosophy going on in the background um so yeah i um because i wasn't sure about about some of it either um like uh whether um whether i found the messaging a bit didactic um Although that might just be because, you know, it comes hard at some some bad reading habits of mine. So um, perhaps I would have felt differently uh, otherwise. But uh, um, but as I was kind of thinking about that, I'm like, well, you know, how would I feel about it if it was like A Wrinkle in Time, which I didn't read like as a young person. I've only read mm. it in the last couple of years uh, mm. and which was too old to read mm. and, it and love it like um, many people do. Um, so yeah, I, I found it useful to kind of look at those two books side by side. I'm sorry that I've joined late. What was the second book? Um, I was talking about A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine La Engel and uh, The Cat Who Saved Books, which is our um, pick for this month. Lisa, did you want to share your thoughts on the book? You're not too too far past. We only just started talking. Yeah, we only just started talking about it. Um, it's interesting to me that you're you're making a comparison between that book and the other one, because in my mind, after about the second labyrinth, uh, the book suddenly felt like a sort of maybe slightly more adult interpretation of or not interpretation, like a rewriting or something of The Little Prince. And I couldn't get that out of my head. It really felt like The Little Prince, like the heart, the idea that they're sort of being plonked into these sort of surreal, slightly cartoony worlds, all as part of a quest. You know, in The Little Prince, it's looking for love. In this one, it turns out it's not too far removed from that idea in a way. In, in the end, uh, I'm sorry if anyone hadn't finished reading it. Sorry. Um, that we all have, but, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like more a quest for, you know, I don't uh, I guess ultimately compassion or something, you know, or the value of, of books or something. Um, but, um, but yeah, it just, uh, you know, once that sort of stuck in my head that it's like, oh my gosh, it's like the little prince, you know, even with the fourth world being sort of like, the real one in a strange sort of way I <laughs> said you know um yeah I actually um I did rather enjoy it I think because it intrigued me because it was a style that I uh you know the way it was written and it, it wasn't like anything else that I've read recently so I was sort of intrigued and drawn into it that way I think um so I, I think I enjoyed it for that reason yeah yeah and I actually really liked what the translators note at the end. That was oh yes, that was I did pretty... like the translators. Yeah, they notes were, were nice. Yeah. yeah. I actually really appreciated the translator note because yeah. I spent most of the book going, "Why the fuck are they doing all of these English books?" And I thought that they'd. I actually went and tried to find the Japanese version because I wanted to find out what books were in the Japanese version. Which, by the way, very hard to do. Um, <laughs> what, and... what did you find? Oh, well, in the translator note, she actually explicitly says that these were the version, these were the actual books that were used in the original. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, thank God she answered that because it was really, yeah, it was a, it was a, really it was a question for me too. It was a mm, question yeah. for me too because I was also kind of like going, they're not as wide, you know, wide ranging and also surely there are fantastic novels from other lots of other cultures, not just Japan where it's set, but like, but it was all very... There was a couple that were from a couple of other cultures, um, but oh, outside of Western cultures. Yeah, um, the unbearable, um, not, 
hundred years of solitude was in there. Yeah, Gus, yeah, yeah. 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 but there was very yeah. few. Yeah, I've actually yeah, read there was that. only one female, um, and there was only one Japanese, and mm-hmm. um, and I was like, I cannot believe, given like Japan's extremely literary, like they've got mm. a massive literary background, and I just couldn't believe that they wouldn't have used. Um, those, but no, 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 no. Gatekeeping mm. with English authors. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's actually one of my things that I want to talk about from all of this is mm. the the gatekeeping element of the reading that they were protecting. Um, mm. There was an element to that which really sort of stuck in my craw a little bit. Like on one hand, I got what they were trying to say and and wanting to get people to read and to read good quality and all of this sort of stuff. But on the other hand, I was like, mm, that's a gatekeeping element to say I know what's good quality and mm-hmm. these things aren't. And I had a bit of a problem with that, especially considering so many of them were not even Japanese, and this was a Japanese set written by Jap in Japanese story there was no reason for it to be written that way <laughs> um, actually but surely the, i mean there, there are surely great japanese literary yeah. works there must there surely are. be definitely are and most definitely are <laughs> i disagree actually mm-hmm. um first of all uh this is the english translation uh, and therefore you have to appeal to your audience here um and like if you're using japanese texts it's not going to have the same resonance for the audience and the same significance that it would if you're using like english canon for example mm. see i uh, just uh, thought that because it was japanese I, that i, I think you would have misunderstood been, elizabeth yeah sorry been, you um, misunderstood it was yeah, that, originally it was originally these authors for a japanese audience that's oh, what my right. problem is for a japanese Can audience see. which seems all right, all right. odd yeah, yeah <laughs> that yeah. is odd that is yeah if odd. they had to, if they if they made the changes i'd be like okay they made yeah. the changes then it makes sense that. yeah, yeah. But and, they and she would have spoken changes. about that in in her notes which yeah. would have been interesting so they didn't actually make it yeah yeah no, they, to the that books. was what the japanese in the original that's super weird yeah isn't it that's what we all thought yeah yeah, and I agree yeah. with you, Mel. Like, as someone, like, I teach people to read in English and, like, the fact, and this whole idea of only read good quality and we're pushing you to read good quality and we're, like, and I'm, like, no, no, read just anything. Read. If someone's <laughs> yeah. willing to read, just let them read because if nothing else, that's already building all of these neural pathways. That's already, like, I mean, it's, yes, there's great, wonderful, high, but not everyone is built for that and not everyone finds that interesting. Mm-hmm. And also books. sometimes and there's nothing wrong with that. And and sometimes that's how you get to the good stuff is you yes. start at a spot. I started yeah. with the babysitters club. Yes. They would not Yay. have considered that good quality writing, but it got me reading and it kept me reading and I moved on from that over the years. But also like I mean look at the they like that's not good quality writing. Okay, so yes they didn't use the most literary and the most like high use language. However, you had amazing role models in that series like for yep. young women amazing so and like, yet, yeah. that message was a problem and yet the message at the end about empathy is exactly why I think reading is so important and was exactly what I got from mm. all reading that I did regardless of what I read yeah yeah in, yeah. in fairness I think within the story uh, Rintaro. Rintaro, Rintaro, Rintaro did see the perspectives of the labyrinth keepers they mm-hmm. were just, I think, mm-hmm. on the extreme end. Like he could, I, I do, I did feel that coming through each story, which yeah. is like, I get what they're saying, but they've kind of taken it to an extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it's I was Alice also in Wonderland, in a way. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, mean, I didn't hate that. I actually kind of yeah. liked that about it. I was like, yeah. this feels a bit like an Alice in Wonderland. Even, thing. even in the labyrinth, he <laughs> got what they were saying, but that it was extreme because he was um, yeah, saying he was almost it so makes sense, it. but there's something about it that's not right. Yeah, yeah. I, think, thought, I think the you first know, they're making one... sense, but it's not quite right. Yeah, mm. it was the, no, no, it wasn't the first one. It was the second one with the um, the new way of reading. Um, yeah. And the comparison to music was an exceptional one, I thought, in yeah. terms of mm. how you're distorting the reading experience by doing it this way. That I think that it's not necessarily um, a bad thing to have different ways for people to experience things, but it shouldn't be a replacement for reading per se. It should be other ways to experience yeah. things. Yeah. Was that the, that was the Cliff Notes Labyrinth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I I remember because I also kind of. I sat there going, but there is value in cliff notes because mm. if it means that person reads it, 
and goes, oh, I'm kind of into this, right? I re remember I read the cliff notes for Dracula and thought, oh, I like this a lot. Now I want to go read the read the full one, right? So again, like I think it has its place. It has its place. And I think that was the thing that I think, um, why I listened to him Rintara. five hours. Why can I not think of how his name is pronounced? I couldn't get it in the audio book. I kept going, Rintara. what the hell are you saying? Rintara, Rintara. What the hell, Rintara. Rintara. What the yeah. hell are they saying? It's saying not his name not is hard to hear the first <laughs> syllable. Yeah. yeah. In, on the audio Natsuki. book. Yeah. 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 It's because I, Japanese is soft on the first syllable and then, and it's also Rintaro because it's actually, they don't have an R Rintaro. sound. Yeah. Rin, Rintaro. Rintaro. Yeah. Yeah. I like I um, liked the um I was okay with the concept of the first and second labyrinth. I think the third one was the one where I'm like, now they're getting a bit judgy about what counts. Can you remind us, reading. please, which ones were which? Because I so the first the first oh go, me or go Lisa. yeah go Lisa. yeah yeah the, the first labyrinth was the was the critic who was just trying to power through books and then would shove them in a in a sort of display cabinet and lock them away oh, yeah. without any care the second one was the researcher who was trying to develop uh cliff notes basically for fast speed reading super speed reading and the third labyrinth was the um the the publishing company who were just sort of like yeah yeah it doesn't sell chuck it out chuck it out chuck it out replace it get something else it does sell uh have I got that the right? trends. That's, that's the gist of it yeah and then yeah, the fourth the labyrinth was the the, the meeting the, the soulless book or theory poss or twisted soul book kind of I guess very ancient book <laughs> mm. and can you sorry go ahead I just remember Elisa made a point and now that I know which one she's talking to what yeah. were you saying about the first and the third what what, what we were saying what, what you what, this discussion that was just happening about like you know the being all judgy about what's a yeah. good quality reading I was sort of comfortable enough with the first and second concepts like as in the second one, the first one is like, yeah, you've read a book, you've enjoyed it, pass it on, share it, you know. <laughs> like, I don't know, you know. The second one I was kind of like, um, I got the point, I came up from the perspective of how sad I am when people, when you say to someone, this book is amazing, and they're like, oh, I saw the movie. And they're like, oh, well, you should, maybe if you liked it, you should try the book, you know. <laughs> um, but the third one was the, the the publishing company was the real one where I'm like, now you're just getting judgy about what people like to read, you know. <laughs> like, I, I, and I think that there was yeah. there was a point behind it, but they missed the nuance of it. They were so on the two extremes rather than going, well, actually, they, to have publishing, they need to compete in a market. And so they do need to somewhat look at market trends and things on those lines. Yeah, I um, think I said out loud to my phone, this is what a business model is. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, not that kind of book, stepping away. <laughs> I sort of equated that one to like um, fast fashion versus your mm. your better, um, more quality clothing mm. and the things on those lines. Yeah, that may not Tailored sell as, stuff. you know, you may not sell every piece, but you're Boutique not sort of art. churning it out and throwing it away. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. throwing away you know making too much and and throwing it all in landfill when it doesn't get sold or read or bought and that mm -hmm. sort of thing um mm -hmm. I actually felt like that one was the most true to life to all the different <laughs> all the different labyrinths which and to me like that one when I was listening to it I was like are they critiquing the publishing like industry which to some extent I don't disagree with like I literally have mm -hmm. watched like what's happened with certain um like trends in science fiction alone that I don't like like when it comes to how they do the covers and stuff like that that really piss me off because that's what sells versus like yes yeah, so I was I was always I was a bit curious about if that was meant to be read as a critique on the publishing situation versus sorry sorry Bobby I was just say, can you give a concrete example of what you're saying about the covers because I okay oh sure God, you so, sound so much um, like a teacher right then <laughs> yeah, okay so I'll give you I'll give you an absolute concrete example my so own education back and look at early 2000s early 2000s and female science fiction authors let's start with Patricia Briggs now I'm not a humongous Patricia Briggs fan when it comes to the actual books themselves but if you look at the covers from her early works whenever she was first being published um they're all they're they're all um they're actually based on what's happening in the story itself the female is coded as being a strong centric character although she's still quite female because she tends to write her characters that way but 
um the, the the woman in the in the cover has agency the picture is like the the art itself is about a particular vignette from the story itself and the focus is on a particular topic from the story and then if you look at it five years later so I, early 2000 about yeah two, when i was in high school so early 2000s you look at it when i get when, by the time i get to university to 2007, 2008, and they have started going to digitally made covers, not hand painted ones. And they're, they're images that have been run through Photoshop. All the women have humongous cleavage. All mm -hmm. the women, uh, the focus is on the bodice and the curves and not on what's happening. Everything is in shadow in the background. She's hyper highlighted through all of her extremely feminine features. You, and it tells you nothing about the story at all. Hmm. we'll start with that one i mean there's plenty more you can find but there's one exactly no, thank you five years that's what they started doing so and they reprinted all of her works like all of her books and those were all the new covers and that's what was selling and they all looked like that there's someone's even got a tumblr where you can go through and look at any book particularly that science fiction or fantasy book that features a female for the last 10 years and the majority of them look something like that they and they're different oh. authors different stories and they all look basically the same because that's what sells. Mm. I thought actually yeah, the yeah. first labyrinth example was kind of like having um, a um, a book tuber or someone like that who's just churning through the books okay. and yes. it's just like reading a phenomenal amount of books and they've got to keep up with the the number of books they've got to read and things on those lines that's what it sort of reminded me the circumstances of yeah okay it, I can see that. it reminds me of those people who, who read self-help books or all the non-fiction of how to make you know a hundred thousand in five days type things so i've worked with people <laughs> like that and they'd read like <laughs> Elon Musk, musk's biography yeah. kind of mm -hmm. thing and i'd just be going you know well, you guys all know my theory, but the internet doesn't necessarily, which is if there's anything of value in an essay or a podcast episode, it's invariably going to get turned into a book and just stretched out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, like the gold is really just in that bit. Yep. So I, I just, yeah, that's what it reminded me of was like, oh, all of these like nonfiction self-help, I have the secret to life, career and love, <laughs> let me try and turn it into, you know, <laughs> a full page novel instead of an essay. <laughs> yeah. In that first labyrinth, there was a bit that I almost missed as well. It wasn't just about him reading and locking these books away, but when Mintaro looked in the cabinets, it was evident he was just reading whatever he could get his hands on because he'd read like certain books in a series, but missed the ones in the middle or missed the ones at the end mm -hmm. or missed the ones at the beginning. So he wasn't reading to yeah. like, he wasn't, he was just reading whatever he was getting. He was he'd he set wasn't a good reads goal it. and he was very, very yeah. dedicated to it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't even thinking about what he wanted to read. He was just reading whatever it seemed like or whatever. Yeah. Was, yeah. So know, that he could get up in front and of talk him. and a Yeah, so that he would, he his numbers yeah. went up. That's basically what it sounded yeah. like in the first one. His numbers went up because he was missing all these holes in his reading. The... So if you really love books, would you ever like, just skip the ones in the middle of a series? No. <laughs> Unless you have nice you, you like sort of, <laughs> yeah. if you're if you're a bit ADD in, in your reading style where you tend to sort of read a few chapters of one book and then jump to another, then read the end of another. <laughs> I, I've known people who do that. They've got like seven books on their bedside and they, <laughs> they never finish any of them. Oh, believe me, but they you wouldn't have read fifty seven thousand books. <laughs> <laughs> That first guy actually reminded my, me of Nye two ways. First off was that Nye will happily read like any part of a series and not complete the whole thing or not, you know, like he doesn't care. Um, and second of all, when I first met Nye and went over to his house, his books were in boxes in cupboards. <laughs> Yeah. Why even have the yeah? There, <laughs> that's the display case thing, isn't it? <laughs> to be fair, he didn't come over, so they would didn't need to be in the display case. To be fair, he didn't have a lot of um, furniture, and he definitely didn't have a bookshelf. But I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, the flashbacks. <laughs> did he? Did were the books like went read once and then put down, or or, or did he actually? Oh read, no, he's he much have... more of a rereader, but he rereads like his favorites over and over again and things yeah, like that. Okay. Um, yeah. but he like his favorite might be the second book of a series that he didn't realize was part of a series but he read the second book and he really liked it and <laughs> never bothered okay, to read the rest 
<laughs> I know I, it's yeah. just I find it funny because he's such a completionist about so many other things that why he <laughs> isn't about books and series I don't understand and maybe it's like me with my with my yarn craft I'm like I can put it down for three or four years and pick up something else <laughs> yeah there's that mm-hmm. so anyway sorry enough analogies to my husband <laughs> um, I, I have a question for the group um what did people think about the personality of the cat it I love how it said it was so it's very cat-like. This <laughs> <laughs> disappointment. That kind of that was the. <sighs> it was very stray cat vibes, sort of. You know, it's grumpy. Don't want to have cat. anything to do with you. <laughs> I I think that I think that's one of the reasons I did not enjoy this book as much as I was hoping to, because I'm looking for a symbiotic friendship between the cat and uh, Natsuki and I wasn't getting that like yes you have a bit of a banter but it was just kind of oh I don't know I he was bullying him half the time <laughs> and yeah I I just really just did, yeah I, I I it's not I also didn't like the name I mean tiger what an unimaginative <laughs> name for a cat. I'm wondering, I'm labyrinth. wondering, because you know where the, you, you get where the cat was from? The mm. cat was from a story his mother read to him as a child. So I can see why the cat's name might be Tiger. Right. Mm. Okay. Also, yeah. also Tabby, Aunt Tabby's in Japanese referred to as Tora. I think that's the name, that's the Japanese name for a Tabby is Tora, which is Japanese for Tiger. I couldn't right. answer that. I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought Tiger was a weird name, but then I I I latched onto right. that bit where it said I was always with you, and then he had some sort of memory of his mother reading a book to him when he was a child. I'm like, a child's book. Tiger the tabby would totally be a child's book yeah. name for a cat. Right. <laughs> In fact, like right. the the whole the whole book, it's I found it quite. Uh, embedded in Shinto thought um, as as far as my knowledge of that extends which is not very far but like they're talking um, so uh, animism is like a key aspect of Shintoism which is um, the the consciousness of objects I suppose Um, and Mm. so treating books with respect is super important Mm. Um, and so and that's where like the the bring this in the last labyrinth with the book who is extremely old uh, and has been around long enough to develop uh, its own soul or or consciousness Mm. Um, and then interacting um, with Rintaro that way. Um, But that's also too, I think, one of the reasons why they might have like tapped into English canon for for some of it at least. Like not to say that uh, Japan doesn't have that they totally totally do and um, but like because when I was thinking about it as as like the just like the English equivalent I'm like of course they would go for like Shakespeare and and all that sort of thing because uh, it's got that weight of history behind it. Mm. Um, I also add on to that that I know that the relationship isn't like from our standards doesn't look great but honestly it's not all that different to what I would consider to be a typical mentor type relationship under those circumstances um so I I think that to me it just didn't look all that unusual basically because of like that's what I sort of would have expected under those circumstances although I would I do argue with the idea how he was classifying himself as Hikako I can never say it Kikamori thank you um Kikamori the um because while I understand I, I can accept it if it was a self-identification as that as a true classification of that I would say he was just not lonely. really not yeah, really I've, doing the thing I've, yeah to my understanding they might have been just like over like him he was self-classifying as that to say you know and maybe um the school counselor what was she school school president school or captain, whatever class captain class, yeah, class captain. captain or whatever class maybe captain, she was yeah. sort of like um 
joking a little bit, like putting it on to call him that as well. Well, it could also be just like more of a, like it's a very real problem in Japan, right? Yes. And so a, a, a counsellor would be trying to be proactive to warn him against it and stuff would make sense to me. Um, but I, I was just sort of like, you're not really there. You just sound like someone who's a bit feeling a bit outsidery at school and a bit lonely. And given how you've been raised and everything, that's kind of normal. So I, maybe you could end up there, but I don't think you're that now. It's more mm. like introverted than... Like, yeah. It felt, yeah. It felt like he could be heading down that path but isn't there yet. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 But perhaps she was being guarded against it because she was so concerned because clearly uh, what well, yeah. you know, it feels well, like maybe it was she two might weeks have or just, something there was a little bit of, been to school yeah, or yeah. yeah. I think there might have been a little bit of teasing behind that. Like she's just making making a lot of making a little bit of a joke about it as well, saying you you are a bit of a shut in, so you're this, but not actually meaning it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's also a possibly a case of where with someone not being cautious with their words can have an impact on someone and and that's a, a bit disappointing when I'm thinking about teachers and schools and perhaps counselling and things like that because yes. <laughs> uh, I what everybody he think? definitely identified as himself. Yes but um, I'm wondering where he got the opinion that it was that that Sure, sure. Okay. Because he was still going to school. He was going out. He was helping in the shop. He was not hiding entirely in a room. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I would say precursor for indicators definitely there. But, but I mean, I, I mean, I'm also talking without a lot of experience with it too, because it's not like I've actually known someone. All I've done is watched a couple of documentaries. So what do I know? <laughs> Um, I like um, the um, author, uh, the translator's notes there. She kept a few of the Japanese words in, and that was one of them. Um, oh, well, there's no real felt there was, word for it. Yeah. <laughs> so she sort of like when she used those three different Japanese words, she explained it the first time. And so that she didn't have to, like, I think that was a smart thing because otherwise she would have had to, like, really explain it every single time. Mm. and so I think it was a good idea for her to like say the word and explain it and then just keep using the word and I like how she put it in, in the print version it's in italics mm. um so you know it's like mm. that word um uh, so that's I thought it was good because it's a choice, though. Hmm? um Ooh. I the italicization of non-english words ah. can be a contentious thing because like it leads to exoticization and, and uh, that sort of yeah. thing it's not always yeah, it's one of well. those things that's sometimes forced upon by all uh, by publishers uh, on authors mm -hmm. and um it's yeah it's got some in communities where it's like done to them yeah. um it doesn't yeah. it's not always looked on but favorably ah uh, yeah standalone I don't see what a problem with it but if there's like a ongoing issue with it I can see a problem yeah 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 it feels a little bit like like listening to the audiobook, I felt it didn't need to be like I that's think the that thing. Like that's what they're always saying. Is, it's not needed. Yeah, I oh that's it. I'm like language and the culture should use words from other languages and cultures that work and that suit and that explain things. Um, they don't need to be like it sounds like doing the, the like double quotes mm. thing, which yeah. I yeah. also it feels yeah, it feels like it's it, mm. like, I, I mean if you look yeah. at the english language too like we've pillaged so many words from other <laughs> languages and that's like... what i mean I, I, and that's the thing i i like i actually like that i like that languages that just go that's a good word let's use that i learned the... one the other day playing Gree, which is a spanish made um video game and they're using the japanese word <laughs> for when the light filters through the forest uh -huh. there's a because there's no other way to describe it and the Japanese have this beautiful way of describing it so they use this word for one of the tracks and one of, and I'm like that's beautiful I can't remember the word it was but I was like I love that that is gorgeous I the fascinating that <laughs> thing about that concept in reverse when we're talking about Japanese languages they've got a whole alphabet system um essentially for using for foreign words which they do constantly a good portion of them are not actually words from the other countries but they still use the 
exotic the equivalent of exoticizing the word um but it's it's so integrated into their their way of doing things now you couldn't pull it out but it's fascinating to yeah. me them yeah yeah, yeah it, it, that is interesting um but also knowing what i've been learning about japan not surprising oh yeah they're super <laughs> racist <laughs> sorry guys. i love you guys but you guys i never loved it you did <laughs> sorry lived there for three years experienced it not me personally Wait. sorry yeah i do but it but it's the benefits i got from being a white person but mm. i had black friends i had um friends from other asian cultures i know what they were experiencing yeah yeah um yeah. i wanted to i wanted to share what the last labyrinth and I don't know if anyone else thought it was going there. I don't know if this is my whole kind of set up and pay off thing that I thought was going to happen. But um, Natsuki had another friend, like the older boy, who they kept saying was being silly and whatnot. And I was kind of like, is he? <laughs> Akiba. Like, Akiba. Yeah, Akiba. Thank you. I couldn't remember his name. Um, when the class captain's name? Sayo. 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 When she got kidnapped in the last labyrinth and they were going off, you know, and they said, oh, I don't know why she's been kidnapped. And I don't know what, what this person wants with you. What the final boss is, I kept thinking. This is the final boss, like in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I Almost thought, seemed like that, though, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Ak mm. Akiba. Oh. <laughs> in my head, I was like, or, or kind of masquerading, like, like because I, I was just like, that would be the best setup and payoff <laughs> from a whole like you know like it's been in there and interacting so when it turned out to be um somebody else I was like oh so are we gonna see Aki Barkett like what purpose was yeah he was like, a bit yeah. of a yeah. utilized character no, no, no. I know exactly what yeah, his purpose I agree. was I agree his purpose that. was to show yeah. the benefit of the bookshop but the also, bookshop had value but also to show that you can be a sports star and good at school and still be interested in reading yes yep yeah and you can yeah. be a sports star and good at school one not everyone's gonna think you're hot and <laughs> to be fair though to be fair in japanese culture it's less of a problem like that's a very westernized view of someone who's good at sport not being good at school honestly in japan oh. japan's culture yeah, very much really very no, hard to both say, go together in in New Zealand, it seems to be an American thing as far as I can tell because yeah. what my experience was growing up and when I think about people, they're usually good at everything. They're good at sport. Oh, no, good I'm at sorry. In a, as an Australian, I have no. so many. <laughs> uh, in New Zealand, of that's the way. If people you, who you, play football and cricket and that's They get hit on the head they, too much, I think. They just right, yeah, put you down forgot, if you even dare to show an intellect. Rugby league, I forgot mm. about that. <laughs> But no, it seems to be if they're if they're if they're got the time, then they're gonna do all the things. Yeah. So um anyway, I just wanted to share that I was like waiting for this final boss to, and I was like, oh, oh, here we go, oh, 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 and then it didn't turn out for oh. Yeah. When, I, when was, I was disappointed I was by right. and I to raise this was what did we think about how the different labyrinth, what do you call them? Overlords and their servants slash wives were represented and when we got to the final one it was a like i don't know what was being said about gender but i did find it a bit uncomfortable i didn't know if anyone else picked up on some of that stuff hmm. mm, japanese very yeah, japan's very patriarchal so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what i kind of figured and i was like oh it's in, uh, it's interesting slash not surprising that they're so far all men who are the ceos slash managing directors and no, so that they kidnapped. I mean, as if she wouldn't be a yeah. badass. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was disappointed, but I did I like. Was so happy like... she got to join in the adventures. I was so happy she was joining in the adventures, and then she just kind of got like <laughs> kidnapped. Yeah. Like, oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. At least there was well, no was... like grand rescue scene where he's the hero, though. He sort of just fades out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Your he does end up with her lying car. in his lap. I you know, know, yeah, that does. Yeah. That, does. that is like the yeah. rescue. Yeah. But also she was the one, wasn't she the one in the second labyrinth that sort of suddenly went all like she got pulled in to the yeah, idea of it? Yeah. So it was like, yeah, it detracted from her 
strength. strong character. Her yeah, force, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her force as a yeah. character yeah. in yeah. her own right. But I also I agree. I, was, with, I think Elizabeth was saying Akiba just kind of petered out and disappeared, and I was like. Hmm. Did you say it was an unutilized character? I think you said. Yeah, under underutilized. Like yeah. I think he says a as a good foil for Rintaro. Um, hmm. Like he, he, um, like not sure whether they're like opposites or whether he could be like someone that Rintaro could grow into, um, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, he uh, he was definitely a bit underutilized. Was he an upperclassman to Rintaro? I think yes, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was yeah, an upperclassman. Yeah. Upper I think classmen. another element of what he was supposed to be showing in the story was that Rintaro wasn't as um, isolated as he thought, that actually mm -hmm. Akbar, um, actually saw him as a friend. They weren't mm -hmm. super close because in Japan being super close with an upperclassman is not heard of. You don't do that. <laughs> um, um, but uh, th they had what would be considered a pretty... A, a start of a friendship or a, a mm -hmm. at least um an acquaintance that's uh, closer than just your casual mm -hmm. one so yeah mm -hmm. and I think it would have been super weird yeah. if Sayo was the only one saying you have friends <laughs> and everybody well, else and that was, was in the story so that was kind of the point I think too was yeah. that like Sayo needed backup for being yes. able to say that you're not and to and because the good portion of the whole story really was Lintaro learning to be to to move a little bit faster in his growth because he needed to because he didn't have the backup of his oh. grandfather there anymore and so he needed to grow up a little bit um because that was kind of I think a good portion of what the story was about um more than like the book stuff was fun but it was just a vehicle for mm. Rintaro really um yeah. And um, and so to me, like that, those little elements that were there that sometimes seemed a little bit misplaced were there for that purpose more than anything. Because yeah, and I think that's why I was a little bit disappointed that Sayo, because I was excited that she was on the adventures, but like you said, she was kind of just enabling him to have growth as opposed to what I thought was a really strong theme and wanted that to come from more, which is you have friends, you work together, they're there for you, you're there for them, which I, I like from the final scene of her being kidnapped, I actually thought that was, I didn't mind that, but I would have liked to see them solving problems together yeah. um, in the same way the cat was kind of trying to help. So, um, and yeah, too, I mean, I but at the like... same time, the children's book, I'm like, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I kind of like the fact actually that it didn't have them get to the point where they were super close friends yet. It was the starting point. It was supposed to be that he'd learnt to open up a little bit that he wasn't completely open yet. And so I kind of like that personally. Yeah. Sorry, Elizabeth, I cut what in front I, of you. Yeah, I was just going to say that like I feel like the kind of implied romantic interest was really unnecessary. Yeah, that I'll really agree was. with. <laughs> I yeah. thought what was going to happen after the second labyrinth, I thought Akaba would be in the third one and be all three of them in the third labyrinth and it didn't happen. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know. I was just oh, I actually I thought we all three of them as well. Yeah. yeah I, I actually thought the final boss was going to be uh, Rintaro uh, facing his future self who had fully become a hick of a Oh, that would have been cool. That's oh, that actually been quite what I thought good. was going to happen. Yeah. Ooh, and, I, and when it was very, like, um, oh, I was, oh, it's a book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried because of you know the age of the book that maybe the fourth labyrinth might get a little bit preachy and it went nowhere near that I'm so happy <laughs> age of the book do you mean as in who it's aimed for or when it was written? oh who the book would be yeah the the sort oh, of book subtext of what book yeah. it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes Yes. <laughs> but it absolutely yeah. did not, like, it didn't even. I, I know, do wonder if they intended what I read from that or yeah. whether or not I said it could be, something else. It could be something else, but what my Western brain thinks is, you know. Well, considering yeah. he used so many Western Do you just want to say it? Should we just say the elephant in the room? Or We thought it would be the Bible. <laughs> yes. I, but I'm like, yeah. there could be other books that are 1,800 years old that are probably, like, very similar. <laughs> probably well, religious texts as well, but I, I was probably um, religious texts. Yeah. I was thinking because because I was thinking that like they would be using Japanese equivalents in the original. Um, mm. Like one one of the oldest books is like the Pillow Book of of uh, oh, sorry I've forgotten the name, but yes. that is like super old. Um, but it's I not eighteen. I, I thought of, of that one. Well, yeah, yeah. Because that's actually a female author. 
Mm. Gross is a I, I, I actually thought of the pillow book too, but I I, mm. I know it's not that old. So that's how I was like, it could be the yeah. pillow. Oh, it's not the pillow book. <laughs> yeah. But it, to me, it how felt implied in the Bible. It, yeah, yeah. It, except that there's a big hole in that, and that it, the Bible's not that old because it's a whole lot of smaller books that then got put together not that long ago. Yeah, <laughs> even. The reason I sort of thought that perhaps it was a poor interpretation of that, um, because I I agree, I I I could tell that it they did I I could tell that it deliberately wasn't saying it. And um I actually and perhaps that was because deliberate to have an ambiguous so people had different interpretations on interpretations on it. I don't know the um the 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 what Soska was trying to do with that, but um with that one, I think that uh the reason I thought it was the Bible is because the westernization of most of the rest of the stories yeah. um and also because most japanese people have not read the bible and so would not necessarily understand like how it's set up and that it is actually lots of books in in total instead um but i'm also like the idea of it being like the yellow book or the tale of genji because female representation of the book itself would imply probably a female author so mm. i like both options yeah as it went into it, as we started exploring the back and forth with the book, I felt very less and less that it was the Bible. Mm. I felt like it was a book I didn't know that may have had importance in Japanese history and culture. Um, and I was, I was okay, I, you know, that was, which was good. Um, um, speaking um, of authors, oh, sorry. I was just going to jump in and say, according to the internet, the tale of Genji was written approximately at the beginning of the 11th century. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to, speaking of authors, I was going to say, on the, for those who have the actual printed version, was there a sort of an about the author? No, I don't really little... know. There was no about the author. I went and did a little bit of a very small biography. Very small one, yeah. I went and did a little bit of digging, but um, I didn't find out much about him because this is the only one that's been translated to English. So there's just not a lot of information out there um, about him. But uh, the getting got getting the copies of Jap in Japanese was just ridiculous mm. <laughs> I, was, I was like why can't I buy this what if I was Japanese and living in Australia why can't I get this book yeah. <laughs> he is a physician uh, he's a, a musician. physician a physician, physician doctor okay, okay. right um, and question because I don't know and maybe Mel you can answer this so the publishing mm. date on this that I'm looking up is like 2021 but that might be the publishing date of the translation. As it's 100% percent the translation. I believe right, this book that's... was re published in 2015 in Japanese. I could be wrong on that, mm. but I've, I remember reading it. So that sounds it's about still, right. It's still a lot younger than I feel like at, it was. At the oldest, I think, because I see copyright okay. 2017 Sasuke Natsukawa. Right. And translation copyright is um, 2021. So maybe yeah, so 2017. 2017. Yeah. I was off by two years. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, I, so sorry, everyone no. was commenting at the earlier stage about the fact that they felt like this was like a YA or possibly younger. Younger, yeah. Do we feel like, so if we, I would agree on the writing style and the a lot of the um, certain storytelling elements and things on those lines, but when it comes to the content of what he was doing in the labyrinths is where I question that. Yeah. I agree, yeah. yeah. Which is uh, one of the things that put me in mind of uh, A Wrinkle in Time because that mm. deals with some of the big philosophy stuff as well. But mm. it also kind of put me in mind of some of those like uh, philosophy catched as like story uh, that would get released in like the 70s and 80s like um oh I thought you were going to say like Flatland which sort of reads like a little children's book but it's absolutely it's really a philosophical tale yeah but, or maybe like Jonathan Livingston Seagull um mm. or even like uh Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance in some respects <laughs> like mm. yeah just kind of like it seems like it seems a simple style but like the the concepts are um mm. 
a bit more. It's not even necessarily that they're too adult. It's just that yeah. I just don't see them appealing to young people as a, yeah. so uh, that's where I'm sort of like, I just don't see someone young caring about the publishing industry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering well, if maybe, I mean, you know, it's sort of like that thing where certain things will just over go over kids' heads and they'll just read Which is what I was days. wondering. And so that yeah. made me think that perhaps this is what we would call as a general book. It's Yeah, because I, I, I found one review and this is it said recommended to anyone who can read. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Like you could read it with a young person probably over yeah. 10, no problems, and yeah. possibly younger, but, you know, I'm mm. kind of chuck a number in there somewhere. <laughs> I, I um, thought you were about to say this is what I would call a propaganda book. <laughs> uh, you mean like The Wizard of Oz or something? Really Hours of Narnia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, Bobby, you said it was a bit Alice in Wonderland esque. Is that was that was you who said that? Yeah. Yep, that was me. Yeah. How did you feel? What sort of age? I mean, obviously, I think Alice in Wonderland is definitely. It written for more for children but how did you feel about the age the reading age I guess of this particular book um I mean like I if you said it earlier sense. no I, if you I said, don't it think earlier, I said it earlier um I mean like people are saying YA and I can see that but I um I mean I wouldn't give it to a really small child I think it, yeah, I think they might not much. really follow along yeah. unless there were a lot of pictures and things to help um mm. or certainly they might get like just the very like the, the skeleton of the story and not necessarily pick up on any of the other stuff which you know kids books are like that too right um yeah I don't know if I'd cash it into just one particular like age group it's I would say that I agree with everyone else that it's like for a variety yeah, it's kind of like if the kid starts reading it and they're enjoying it, they're old enough to read it. Yeah, pretty much. I think it's one of those books too that is it's it's meant it's designed and its point is to talk to people who likes books in the first place. Yeah, yeah, that too though. That or um, yeah, uh, or someone who at least thinks that books are important in some way like there might mm. be someone who doesn't necessarily find reading very easy or very fun for a variety of reasons but they think books are important because mm. mm. I mean it's in the title in a lot of respects it's not the um <laughs> Soske grows up story it's the cat who <laughs> saved books right yeah. It's yeah. Except, except except the cat wasn't the one saving the fucking books True. no the cat didn't yeah. do much actually the cat didn't I, think, yeah. I think that cat was like a spirit guide <laughs> it didn't do much it just sort of guided him and I, I would have liked more around. of the cat I definitely yeah. would have liked I mean, more it, of the I cat. mean if the cat's just a manifestation yeah. of a book character then it probably couldn't do much anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten. Yeah. I, rem I remember uh, reading the Japanese title and I'm pretty sure it was fairly close mm. I'm going to oh, make okay. it so. yeah I think it's look it's interesting because as I read it, it felt I was like YA, but oh, maybe it's younger. I think it's because it has t a teenage protagonist, right? And who mm. at the end gets to sit up, set up shop as a. I don't know how he's going to juggle school and running a shop, but okay. Um, whereas from a children's perspective, yeah, I was thinking probably eight, nine, ten, eleven, like that kind of wrinkle in time. Um, audience that you were speaking of, Elizabeth. And admittedly, it's fine to read about people who are older than you anyway. So I, I think the thing is that Natsuki read like he was sort of 13, 14, but he <laughs> must have been older to be if he was able high school. to live on his own. If he was high school, he'd have to be at least 15, 16, I think. First year high school in 16, Japan 17. is like 15, yeah. 15, 16. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. I read that as like, yeah, like 13. But, but like you said, like, uh, uh, yeah. Um. Meanwhile, the Japanese cover is my favourite cover of all of them, and that's saying something because I really quite like this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're talking about how it 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 um, sparkles. So it looks so it's, plain yeah. on a monitor. It doesn't look Probably. as pretty, but yeah, it's got yeah. all oh. gold detail here, Lovely. all around the edges, and then the books have gold detail that's written in gold. So it's really actually a really nice cover, that one. But I do like, oh, that's, that's the nice. Japanese one. Because nice. oh, there's another cover as well. 
um, I, which is a uh, really Japanese like art style. I think that's more accurate representation as well. That's what I really Bobby like was, that cover. That is a beautiful. What Bobby cover. was talking about that is a mm. much more accurate representation of the book <laughs> than the cat sitting there. The cat's cute. It's going to draw you in. So yeah, there's yeah. marketing. Oh, look at that! The publishers didn't even pay attention to what the book was about. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they just were heard about whether or not they could sell it. <laughs> But yeah, the other cover in the English version I quite liked as well because it's got a very Japanese artistic style to it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's see. I didn't it's like the main it one actually. But that's yeah, fine. I don't now. I liked it before I actually saw that this was sparkly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's such a magnificent full screen. I know. Oh god, sorry. Um, stupid good good reads up is horrible. Who else did the audio book? Me. I only started yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I did. I found the narrator's choices weren't great. Um, and I think, and I just wondered if that, I, and Bobby, I was interested in talking to you because you had a similar kind of lukewarm feeling. Do you think that part of our reaction was the performance? Because others seem to be a bit more positive towards it than. Oh, no. Okay, so sorry, I just did a, a full translation of the Japanese title, and it's literally a story about a cat trying to protect a book. <laughs> okay. So, so that, that's the um, Japanese that's, cover. Oh, well, that's a different cover. I should oh, say. I that's, remember yeah, that English one. cover. Yeah, yeah I remember English that one. cover. Um, and, but I know that that's incorrect because Japanese don't have plurals; they do counting, and that's it. So. It's probably to protect books, not a book. Yeah. So, <laughs> I um I did the audio book and I I yeah I'll be honest I didn't like the way the narrator did the voice of Sayo Sayo or or the auntie. Yeah, I didn't like. Nerves. I didn't like the cat. I actually, they're doing a British that British. Oh, yeah. I think that I think weird. that's what put me off the cat in a big way. Was the British voice? Um, I mean, the cat and was the jerk, auntie. Let's be clear here. The cat yeah, was a jerk. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, like maybe you of... could have been from Jersey. Like if you had a Doisy accent, <laughs> I would have been put more down with it. I don't know. I, I would not have taken it was seriously at all. If it I, I can't get it to fit on the screen properly, but there's like a full version of the um, other I didn't, other cover. I didn't hear what you said, I, though, Bobby. So, that's the cover that came with the audiobook that I checked out from the library. I quite yeah. like that cover. Like that's kind of fun. That makes me think of like them like the cat taking you through worlds of like with, with yeah. books and stuff. That kind of fits. Yeah. That certainly fits better <laughs> than some of the other covers I saw. How no matter how pretty they were, because gosh, some of them were really pretty. But yeah. Um, I don't yeah, know. So there you go, what, Mella what? says publication year right here on this page as well. <laughs> What's the well, publication? I think Bobby's it was also. 2017, definitely. Oh, what yeah. was that, Lisa? <laughs> Oh, oh, just you were asking what Bobby said. I think Bobby said uh, that she couldn't have taken the cat seriously if he had an accent from Jersey. Is that what she said? <laughs> no, that's kind of what I wanted. It was like, if he's going to be a jerk, like. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. I think if, yeah. if he had had an over-the-top accent, everybody needed to have an over-the-top accent. And honestly, yeah. <laughs> as much as I know a Jersey thing is a thing, like, it just, it does not, it's not something that, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that assumption where someone opens their mouth and speaks with a southern drawl and their IQ for you automatically drops 10 points yeah just yeah. because of See, I, I, but that, I, I couldn't help that by the same token was the problem I had with them doing a British accent because it gave that whole oh I'm very smart and I love books kind of feeling to it I was kind of like if you're doing everybody else in American accents mostly why is the cat like it doesn't have to be a Jersey accent I was just kind of jesting but it just it kind of jarred against everything else, but I guess it's not of this world. I don't know. Um, I think and so, the auntie, uh, the auntie mm. sounded like a nice person, and um, I don't quite, yeah. Um, but I'm I was also so glad I read the physical version right now. Really, hang on. This is this is important. Um, okay. I was, I was, because of the accent and the way that Rintro was reacting to her, I was also very aware of how sizest the author was. There was a lot of body shaming every time the aunt was mentioned, and I was very much put off by that. 
So um, that was the other thing that I, I oh, found so really Japanese. annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, yeah, it was just like, oh, it's, you know, and, it's just, and, and like they kept talking about um, squeezing into the into the car, into I'm the like, Fiat. Oh, yeah. just I was like, she's a nice person, and she's like, you, oh, anyway. That made Sorry. me just think of her as a, a, a jolly, jolly lady. <laughs> a nice jolly Which lady. We got the first time. Yeah, so you didn't have to keep her. saying she was yeah. back into the car. <laughs> Once was enough. Um, anyway, that's all. That, I'm off my, my, my milk <laughs> crate now. Thank you. Oh, yeah I so say. i mean at least with the british accent thing let's say that they let's say that the version of the audiobook that's been published is one that was mainly geared towards americans if you're trying to underscore this idea of the cat as a mentor that is a good that's 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 a it makes it a for an american choice. audience yep. Yep. yeah it's oh, a logical choice okay. for an american audience because, but do you know what okay. what voice i was in my head for the cat i couldn't what? help it Salem from Sabrina Teenage Witch. Yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I think it didn't that help that I was looking at something and Salem voice. was in it. And so that voice, I, I saw um, a picture of Salem, like a gif or something um, with some lines on it. Oh, and I'm like, oh, now I can't get that voice out of my head while I'm reading it. And now I know also why is because it's try like it was Binks. It was Binks the first time round before it became Binks the second time. So like, like in Bobby, the the movie with the yes oh so yep. binks at the beginning like it's a you know yeah. oh yeah he British totally could have been binks I think, too I think now. Yeah. is binks sorry binks is the cat from uh hogan's pocus oh okay yeah no, nice no, i'm confused i'm like i have no idea with the reference i haven't watched hocus pocus <laughs> do it like a they're used to cats who are british <laughs> when when well, but, even, but, like, but, and... but binks was not british binks binks did not have a british accent well that's true because by the time Bink, he, they met binks 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 had a transatlantic accent by the time they yeah. met him yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, well, he, he, but to be, honestly enough. he had a transatlantic accent even during even at the beginning before, like, uh, <laughs> in, in the it was past. just more oldie speech at the beginning yeah anyway um so yeah the audio book i look it's also i've just come off listening to ray porter oh yeah you can't really it's, it's gonna to be get, it's no one's it's gonna get a fair hard. comparison <laughs> yeah you're kind of going from one of the best narrators out there to someone who's just trying their best probably you know it's you know so and i, I always also put it down to you don't know what the direction was and sometimes it can all be the direction is not good so yeah Anyway, yes, be grateful you read it. And that's why I was like, well, be thankful, be pleased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just glad my library had it because you couldn't, well, sorry, at least on Amazon, you couldn't buy the um, ebook. So, yeah. Yeah, I oh, wanted yeah, to do there an was e no ebook version in my library. Only, so, to it. All they so, had yeah. was the audiobook. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, like, I had oh, to, my library hours. had, my library, like the SA libraries had tons of, um, copies um and so my local library international had bestseller so yeah. i really it yeah down. so yeah there were tons of copies in all different yeah. libraries and mine had the in thank god because i didn't realize i'd borrowed the audiobook so early and it ran out before i finished it and then mm. i couldn't borrow it again because somebody else was borrowing it <laughs> so that's why i didn't quite get through the yeah. audiobook and i'm like oh, is that the library i have to go to the library my whole came in as well so oh no i had to return something as well <laughs> Like, go, go pick it up. I just, I just experienced the problem. I, I, I've, right, I've been now that I'm really attracted to and love the idea of audiobooks. Thank you, everyone, for introducing me to that, especially Bobby. Um, I have also found the downside of audiobooks, which is falling asleep while listening to them and then waking up and going, I don't remember this bit. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how many yeah. chapters have I missed? That's yeah. why it's That's good if you're, you if you're laying timer. in bed and you think you might, yeah, put on the sleep timer. Put the timer yeah. on, and then you yeah. don't lose too much. Yeah. Most, you know you, you're within that last hour somewhere 30 minutes button there is okay yeah. okay I will, yeah I will, most yeah, apps will like, even different apps feature. should have i will have them i think most of the apps that i've used have a um sleep feature so you can get it to turn off after yeah. a certain amount of time yeah, yeah. but you're also um, discovering that there's great differences like you can have a great book and not great narration or you can have great narration and not great books so sometimes you know just never know <laughs> or both bad or both good <laughs> guys are we wanting to wrap up discussion i think so i don't i think we've gone through it it was a short book we mm -hmm. talked for quite a while on it <laughs> yep yeah, it was yeah, quick read yeah 
Yeah, speak to <laughs> Sorry, it was a quick Sarah. read. It wasn't a quick listen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh god, I wanted the laundry. I was like, oh my god, well, I'm still in this world. Even though I say that, like I actually did find because it's written in present tense. I found that jarring at first, but I always do. Um, so it just took me a little bit to adjust. I read it in a day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a quick read. I read sure. it, went to dinner, came home, read the rest. <laughs> Because I went back I, and started I, from the beginning when I got the, uh, the coffee. I mean, I, I did actually quite enjoy it. I, I mean, I know there's lots of little things just just for itself, really. And I, I said I think it was because I was pulled into the idea of the story. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. But I would recommend reading it in print. <laughs> yes, get the print version. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Apparently, um, but yeah, I'm thinking that perhaps that might. So a lot of the sorry, I'm going back into book discussion. A lot of the ideas that are espoused in this, I think, actually tie very closely to um, Japan's cultures around books anyway. Like the lack of ebook versions is actually not an uncommon thing. They're very much like their prints and all of that sort of stuff. So I think a lot of that comes into it. Anyway, just. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah. Um, so thank you, anybody who watched. Our next book for next month is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. And hopefully we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.